Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Jade, also known as the Southbook here on YouTube and Instagram. Welcome to those of you that are new that just joined the channel from my last video. I hope you guys enjoyed watching my Hermes handbag collection last week. It was a ton of fun to film and to share with you guys. So for this week, I wanted to do something a little bit different. I wanted to do a video on what are the top handbags I would recommend to you guys if you were to start your luxury collection in 2023. We'll do them by different price points so hopefully there's something that can fit into your budget. Starting off we're gonna look at handbags that are under the 500 euro price point. We're actually gonna do a small unboxing because I did buy myself something that happens to be in that price bracket and I think it would be a great premium handbag to start your handbag collection. So here's the box. I would say rather than the specific style it would be more so the brand that I would recommend to you guys. Their price point is pretty friendly. Usually the items are under 500 euros. So this is a French brand called Pauline. I actually discovered this brand while living in Paris because the Pauline store happened to be on the way to my Pilates class. So every morning when I pass by, I see there is a long line and it kind of caught my attention that way. And eventually I decided to get one and add it into my collection and just unbox it quickly for you guys to see. So here it is, this is a new bag I got from Pauline. Pauline, I think that's how you pronounce the name of the brand. It's not sponsored, I bought this because I really like the aesthetic of this bag. This is the Neuf collection, I think. I think it means like nine. Their brand is quite unique because instead of like naming each of the bag, they have a number assigned to it. So this one in particular, I really liked it because it's very stylish but also minimalistic. And I think it's really cute. The camel color is really nice. It's perfect for all seasons. It's a very neutral color and it's quite petite so I can wear in the summer or in the winter. There is a bigger version of this bag which I would love to have for winter but I decided to start with something small. It has like a little pocket here and it has a shoulder strap which is nice you know. It's gonna be quite difficult to carry it around if it didn't have a shoulder strap. The leather is honestly quite nice. It does have a bit of like a chemical smell which is frankly quite normal. I was rather surprised by the quality of these handbags. You can feel that they're pretty well made especially at this price point. I think it's definitely fairly good value for the price. If it was your first luxury handbag I think there's another model from this brand that I would recommend to you guys. It is the these. So 10. I'll show you guys a picture of it. It's basically kind of like a crescent moon shaped handbag that you can wear on a single shoulder or crossbody. It's quite stylish, the shape and everything, and the made is also quite good. So I think that's definitely a good one if you are looking to start somewhere, you know, like premium, not exactly going after a luxury name brand. That's honestly a perfect bag to add to your collection as your first handbag. So moving on, I'm actually going to skip the 500 to 1000 euro price range because I think within that price range, you're not really getting a really practical handbag. Like if you're going for something from a luxury brand, usually in that price range you're only able to buy a very small mini bag that's just not practical at all so you might as well save up a little bit more and buy something above the 1000 euro threshold and have a bag you can really enjoy and use daily so that's why we're doing a 500 euro skip so the next price bracket which is i think it's a very comfortable price range for a first luxury handbag most of the bag i would recommend to you guys fall within this range so it's the 1000 to 3000 euro price bracket so within this bracket. The first one, I would say the first brand I would recommend to you would probably be Celine. Like if you're like myself in my 20s looking to start, I think Celine is a awesome brand that's really on trend but also has its own timeless aesthetic. So the first bag I would recommend from Celine would be the Celine Ava bag. So some of you guys have seen this one on my Instagram. I really really adore it, especially in the summer month. I think it's a very versatile bag. You can practically wear it all year. It is an under the arm bag. I'll show some body shots for you guys. And it's very easy to use. It's pretty friendly, I would say the price. I think the Eva bag, the canvas versions like these ones cost 1,300 euros. There's also the leather version. There's also a new one that I'll show you guys a picture of that has like a little 
like flap that has the Celine logo. So that one is also quite cute. Personally, this is the one I got. I've used it a lot, especially in summer, spring, even up to fall. I think this is a great bag. And the detail in the bag is done quite well. You can see here's the stand there. There's also like the leather detail is quite good. The zipper is quite smooth and it's honestly quite spacious inside. Like you can fit everything you need. So it is quite a very practical one, I would say, that you could use daily. So that's kind of why I recommended this bag. The next bag is also another bag from Celine and it is the Celine, I think it's called Triumph collection. As you can see, I am obsessed with the white canvas with the brown leather on the side. Because it's canvas, it's really not easy to damage. Like if you get caught in the ring with one of these two bags, you really don't have to worry about it. So for durability, it passes the test. And that's, I think, a very important part of having your first bag that's going to be hopefully quite practical and something you can use daily. So the Sunny Tran bag comes at a little bit higher price point. So I think in Europe right now, it's around 28,000 euros and it goes up to maybe like 30 200 to 3500 I believe. The canvas ones are always on the lower price range. But this bag specifically, this one I love to use if I'm traveling because you can wear it cross-body. When I have no extensions, I find the clasp a little bit hard to use, but you just have to use your coat to like get it to open. But there we go, it is open. So you can see it's pretty classic kind of interior layout. Like you have three layers, the inside is kind of like a softer leather that's still quite scratch resistant. I haven't really had issues with it. And here's the strap. As you guys can see, I put it quite long so that I can wear it comfortably crossbody. For those of you that likes to be quite hand-free, like you like to wear your bags crossbody, I think this is definitely something I recommend over the Ava. But both of these bags, honestly, I love them both. They're slightly different aesthetic, as you can see. One is a under the arm kind of bag and the other one is like a more versatile crossbody classic shape of a handbag. So both of these are great. They're obviously very different price points so you could choose one based on your needs and kind of what price you're comfortable paying. But either of these would be great for handbags. The next bag I'm gonna recommend to you guys is the Prada Clio bag. I don't know if I've talked about this here on my channel, but this is honestly my most used bag and probably the handbag I recommend the most to anybody that's looking for a daily handbag. Frankly, like even though it looks quite like flat and small, you can fit so much into this bag. I have honestly used this bag so much, like you can see the strap is no longer folding in the right direction. That just tell you how much I love it. Even though it's kind of like a shiny finish, it's held up fairly well. The length and the shape of the bag makes it very, very easy to wear. Like I can wear it in the summer when I'm just wearing a t-shirt or I can wear it in the winter when I'm wearing a full coat. So it's definitely something that's super versatile. The only downside of this bag is probably like it doesn't really stand on its own, like because the bottom is like this kind of shape. I mean, when you store it, just lean it against something and it'll be fine. The Prada Clio bag, I think in Europe right now, retails for 2,400 euros. Of course, those of you that are not living in Europe, you can get D-Tax, which helps a lot with the budget of things. There is a more affordable version of this bag that's not from Prada, it's from Saint Laurent. They actually look very, very similar. I'll put a picture for you guys to see. It's practically the same aesthetic. So it just comes up to what's your budget, which when you prefer aesthetically and taking a look at them in person to decide but definitely this style of black handbags I highly recommend. It's truly something you can wear throughout all kinds of circumstances and if it was your first handbag, it's your only handbag, it can handle most situations. So the next bag I'm gonna recommend to you guys, I don't personally own it but I have recently purchased one for my fiance's sister. It's a tote bag so for those of you guys that are looking for a more practical daily bag that can carry you know your laptop and some documents and stuff like that i think this would be an excellent purchase. It's from a French brand called Vech La Page. I'm probably butchering the pronunciation. It's a French brand. I don't think it's super well known, but the aesthetic of the brand is quite similar to Goyard, which is very popular right now. Personally, I find this one more practical. So 
the exact model I recommend to you guys. It's called the Daily Battleship Zip. And there's a couple of different sizes. The largest size, I think, is the 35. I think the 32 will still fit a laptop, but you just kind of have to check with the store staff to make sure that it works. It's a very simple tote bag. It's very lightweight, but it still does hold some of its own structure. The zip closure really helps with keeping your laptop and you know your books and documents safe and dry in case you get caught in the rain. So it's definitely a very, very durable tote bag and I think an excellent first purchase if you're looking for something on the larger and more practical side of things. So that's it for this specific price bracket. Now we're looking at items that are more expensive at maybe the above 3500 4000 price range. I think at this point you would be looking at brands like Chanel or Hermes as your first bag. It's not the kind of price range I would recommend anyone going into as their first luxury handbag. Of course if you want the best you know you have a really clear vision of what you like to have or you're just worried about the Chanel price increase this is definitely something you could look into. There is a couple of handbags I would recommend for you guys to look at first if you're interested in Chanel or Hermes. Let's start with Chanel. So as you guys know Chanel has been doing crazy crazy price increases especially on the classic flaps so personally I don't recommend going for a classic flap. I do love them but I truly just don't think the quality and the price is a match and it's not quite worth the price it's going for anymore. So personally I would recommend you guys looking more at the seasonal pieces so the seasonal flaps that kind of have the similar aesthetic as the classic flaps but are not as of a crazy price as the classic lineup. So this one I have it's a mini flap square. It's not considered a classic flap because it's only a single flap as you guys can see. It doesn't have two flaps and that's kind of how you differentiate whether or not it's a classic flap or it's just a single flap or like a simple flap bag. So there's actually a couple of different versions that Chanel has come up with in recent years. I will show you guys some pictures but I think these are great starting points if you're looking for your first and back to be from a brand like Chanel. I don't recommend going for something that's super super seasonal like that doesn't have any of the classic Chanel aesthetic. Those ones tend to fall out of trend very quickly and it would be kind of a shame to get this bag as your first electric handbag and you know eventually you lose interest in them over time. Of course if you are looking for a classic flap and you want your first bag to be a classic flap then perhaps start looking more in the vintage or pre-love market for some good deals especially if you're somebody that's able to travel the vintage market in Japan is very vibrant and you can find some excellent deals if you're there on vacation so just look out for them. Next we're going to talk about Hermes. One of the bags I would say I would recommend because everybody knows that you know the Brick and Kelly collection is a bit difficult to obtain would be a mini bolete. So you guys have seen this one in my handbag collection video. I really like the mini bolete. I have two of them and I said last time that they're kind of to me a replacement for the mini Kelly because mini Kelly's as you guys know is really hard to get. It's similar in size, similar in aesthetic, it doesn't have any obvious logos. It's just a very simple cute bag that has a lot of historical significance to it and fit a lot of things as well like capacity of the bag is a lot better than the mini kelly so i have stuff inside but you guys can see it's just a big hole you can put a lot of things into it if you have a phone like you honestly have no problem fitting into the bag and there's so 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 much space to spare so for anyone that's looking for a cute mini bag from Hermes potentially this could be a good option I did notice when I was doing my research that price of the mini bully have definitely gone up quite a bit so if you can find one on the pre-love market I think you'll end up with a better deal than buying them directly from the boutique sometimes these are available in the online shop like the online Emory shop so you can keep an eye out there as well. Other than the mini bolide, I would say there is, I mean, there's the other bag called, I think maybe Evelyn, which a lot of people like to have as their first bag. Personally, I don't love the aesthetic of those bags, but I do think it could be a good first handbag from Hermes if you're looking for something small. They're a bit more affordable. I think they're around like a thousand euros. There's also the Pickleton, which personally, I do not like. I just think to me, that's just like a sack of leather. It holds no structure. 
it's just not a very attractive bag for me. So back on the topic to mess bags I actually recommend. So obviously the Mini Bully, I personally have them, I own them, I love them. Other ones I would say probably like the Mini Lindy if you would like to have again a mini bag that's more hand-free or garden party. I am not crazy about garden party, that's why I don't own one. But I would say the Bolit series, like the Mini Bully, there's Bully 25, 27. These are the sizes I would recommend and the aesthetic of them is quite nice. It has a very clean look and I think it's rather timeless as well. So that's definitely something I recommend you guys starting up with. But if you want to go all the way, as you guys know, I am an Hermes collector, so I definitely should share my opinion on this. If you want to go all the way and you want either a Birkin Kelly or Constant, as your first bag, I would probably recommend going for like a smaller Birkin or Kelly, but not like a Mini Kelly, because the Mini Kellys, even though they're really cute and well sought after, they're not very practical. So I truly don't recommend that as your first bag. Like a Mini Constant would be much better, in my opinion, than a Mini Kelly as your first and potentially only luxury handbag. If we're looking at just Birkin and Kellys, I would say a Birkin 25, a Birkin 30 or a Kelly 25. One of these three sizes in a neutral color would be the best like first handbag you can possibly have. They're very timeless, extremely luxurious, very hard to obtain but something that you're gonna love and enjoy for a lifetime. That's also why I recommend going for a little bit of a neutral color so that it can really last throughout time. So neutral colors like black or youtube or gold these are very classic colors that you can never go wrong with other than that i would say anything that's like a muted color like bertamond that could work blue glacia that could also work like a color but that's more muted these ones are still very very wearable on a day-to-day -day basis that's all for today's video and all the handbags i would recommend to you as your first luxury handbag if you guys have any questions feel free to leave them in the comment section down below or if you have any topics like me to cover also leave it in the comment section. I'll leave all of the details for the handbags that I can find in the comment section for you guys so it's easier for you guys to find. If you end up getting one of the bags I recommended today as your first handbag, please let me know. I would love to share, I guess, your joy with you. Anyway, thank you guys so much for staying till the end. I'll see you guys next time. Bye! Mm -hmm.